I'm putting a short video together to show how to disassemble and check the tolerances for the tip and body of your oil pump on a 1JZ VVTi. Uh, this particular engine came out of a JZX100 chaser. Uh, I picked it up from JDM Orlando Inc. Um, the engine was very clean. Oil was clean. There was no sludge buildup in the engine. Pulled the cam covers, pulled the oil pump. Everything looked good. But when I went to check the timing belt and things on the front end, I noticed that uh, the pressure regulator for the oil pump uh, was leaking. And all that is is an O-ring, and I figured when I if I was going to take the thing apart, I might as well check everything while it's apart. So, um, first thing you can do is when the oil pump is bolted on the engine, this is a 24 millimeter. It makes it easier to break that loose while it's just on the engine and holding it. If not, you can take the oil pump off the engine, put it in a vise to hold it, but make sure you use soft jaws, wood, aluminum, something like that, so you don't mar up the actual oil pump. Um, Next thing you'll need is you'll need an impact driver like this. This will make getting all these Phillips head screws on the pump cover a lot easier to get off. Um, it's fairly simple to use, just make sure you have it on reverse before you start beating on the Phillips heads. And make sure you have your oil pump sitting on a wood bench, um, maybe prop a piece of wood under the end so it doesn't wobble, just so you have a solid surface to mount it to. Um, and break all the bolts loose. There's nine in total. These were already broken loose. This whole pump was taken apart and cleaned and I spec'd it out beforehand just to make sure everything was good before I went ahead and put this video together so I wasn't wasting anybody's time. Now I should also mention that all the specs I have on this oil pump are from a USDM 2JZ service manual. Um, I've tried to get the specs on forums looking for manuals for the chaser. I haven't been able to find anything but the 2JZ and 1JZ pumps are interchangeable. Uh, the GTE pumps, the turbo pumps. So. Um, I just went ahead and used the specs for that to, to check the tolerances on this pump. Um, I don't suggest doing that. It's, I mean, I just did it because they're both turbo pumps. Everything looked clean on this engine when I took it apart, so I'm just going to go with the 2JZ specs and uh, put it back together. Um, you have your outer rotor here and your inner rotor. What these do is they spin, and when these are opening up, they're creating the suction, which this is the suction coming from your oil pan pickup. It's sucking it in, and then it's compressing it back down and creating pressure behind, which is coming out here going into your block. The pressure relief is in here. This is there's a small plug down here, spring in the center, and you got your cap on top. Um, what that does is when the pressure builds from here, if it starts to get too high, this is the spring is set to a pressure, this will open up and it basically bleeds all your oil back off and it comes back down and just gets circulated through. And that's what keeps, keeps the engine happy. Um, like I was saying, this, um, if you look on here, when you check your tip clearance, what you're checking is when your two high points right here come by each other. Uh, the Toyo, the spec for the 2J on the tips is a minimum of two thousandths and a maximum of fifteen thousandths. So I have a two thousandths feeler gauge. And the 2000s fits in fine. And the 15,000s won't fit. 
which tells us that we're in spec for the tip clearance. Uh, the next you want to check is the body clearance, which is the actual space you have between the body of the pump and the actual, or I'm sorry, the body of the moving part of the pump and the oil pump itself, which is three thousandths minimum on that. Which is three thousandths shim fits in just fine. Uh, max on that is six thousandths, and the six thousandth shim I cannot get in. So everything on that part of the pump checks out. Uh, if you remove both of these, there is the front main seal is sitting behind here. Um, I already knocked it out. It's getting changed anyway. It did have a slight leak at the bottom. So just making it easier for the video. If you have it apart and you've never ported an oil pump before, if you look in all these inlets and outlets, the inlet from the oil pan, the outlet here, and the pressure relief outlet, they all have really sharp edges. On all, every single one of these has had a super sharp edge. Uh, there was a little bit of casting flash in some of these. What I did is I just went in with a Dremel tool um, with a single cut bit and basically rounded off all the edges. I didn't get crazy trying to port it and open orifices up anything like that. Just basic rounding off of the edges. Rule of thumb is it prevents cavitation, uh, things like that. Um, so, after you've checked that, um, the problem I had with my pump, the reason this came off, is because this guy right here, there's an O-ring underneath it. It was leaking. So, I already broke this loose. That comes off. The O-ring's on here. I already took it off. Let's see. The spring comes out. There's a plunger in there. There's that. Now this went through the parts washer. I cleaned it up after obviously I spec made sure everything was fine. Pump was good. Uh, cleaned it up. There's really nothing else. Nothing else to say about it, uh, other than reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. Um, you just want to make sure when you're putting the parts back together to lube everything up with oil before you start putting this back together. Uh, also, another thing you can look in here and just make sure when you have this apart that there's no major scarring, gouges, anything, anything in the um, walls of the pump or the the pump cover. So there's just a small, uh, real shiny spot right there, but it's just a real tiny spot. Everything else looks good. I'm gonna throw this back together. And, get the engine and what it's going in so I can drive it. Um, when you put everything back together, I just had a mark. The, um, the 1JZ inner rotor does not have um, a reference mark on it like the 2J does, and like the service manual says it does. So all I did is took just a magic marker when I took it apart made a uh, reference mark on it and so when I put it back together they both go in the same way um, let's see when you're putting it back together these Phillips screws that set this in here get torqued to eight foot-pounds um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and put just a tiny, tiny dab of blue Loctite on the ends of all these when I when I reassemble this thing to put it back. Um, and your plunger will drop in. 
ring goes in after him. And the cap for this, when it gets put on with the new O-ring, gets torqued to 22 foot-pounds. I guess that's it. I um, hope this helped out. I looked around for videos on any kind of specking out oil pumps and anything like that for 2Js, 1Js, and there were no videos, so I figured I'd make one. So I hope this helps you out. Have a good one.